One of the greatest doctors of the 19th century, Sir William Osler, famously said, if you listen to your patient, they will tell you the diagnosis. As a practicing doctor myself, I'm constantly reminded of the importance of listening. But I also work in marine conservation with coastal communities in the tropics. What if you could apply Osler's same wisdom, not just to individual patients, but to whole communities? What would happen if conservationists were to listen to communities at the front line of conservation and were willing to respond to what they heard? When I first listened to fishing communities in Madagascar, I completely changed what I decided to do with my life. What they taught me is that efforts to protect our oceans are failing. Failing to protect our magnificent marine wildlife and failing to protect the livelihoods of the hundreds of millions of people who rely on fishing. People who, without fishing, do not have an income and do not have a source of protein. People like Noriko. Noriko is a fisherman living on the island of Madagascar. He's about to embark on a journey. Taking his family with him, he'll sail for 600 miles north for nine months in a simple dugout canoe in search of better fishing grounds. Noriko and his family are Vezu, a seafaring people who rely upon the ocean. If they don't fish, they don't eat. Their very cultural identity stems from their relationship with the sea. There are more and more people from Noriko's community who are making this trip because their local fisheries are collapsing. A generation ago, Noriko would have been able to catch enough fish to feed his family in just a couple of hours, thanks to healthy marine ecosystems. But now he faces competition from ever more local fishermen and women, as well as competition from international fishing vessels, fueled by demand for seafood for our dinner tables, thousands of miles away. Twelve years ago, I joined Blue Ventures, a marine conservation organization that works with Vesu communities, and that prides itself on listening. Through listening to the stories of Noriko and others, our team were able to develop an understanding of the challenges Vesu communities faced. As they gained the community's trust, they started to work with them. And together, they developed a locally-led approach to protecting the marine environment that saw a rapid recovery of one of their most important fisheries. When I first arrived in this remote and beautiful place, I was the doctor for the Blue Ventures team. It was my passion for marine conservation that had taken me there. But I soon realized that actually the team were quite healthy, and I became curious about the health of Vesu communities. As I started to ask questions about health care, what I, what I heard was just as disturbing as what we'd heard about fisheries. This is Irene. Irene was still at school when she became pregnant and was unable to complete her education as a result. When Blue Ventures started work in Madagascar, Vesu communities had little or no access to health care. If women like Irene had wanted to use family planning, they would have had to walk 30 miles <laughs> to the nearest clinic. A lack of any kind of safe birthing or maternal care meant that Irene would probably have given birth at home, attended to by somebody with no training, with no running water, and possibly not even any light. Women like Irene are over a thousand times more likely to die in pregnancy or childbirth than women here in Exeter. Girls were having sex and, getting, and, and having their first child at a very young age. Couples were having more children than they intended. And all of this was impacting upon the health of their children. The population of the region was doubling every 10 to 15 years, and the need to feed growing numbers of people was contributing to the pressure on fisheries and on the marine environment that we were seeing. Women like Irene told us how they were desperate for better access to family planning services. Men were keen to use family planning too. Dwindling fisheries could no longer support large families, and they could see a clear link between family size and food security. What was most interesting of all was that communities were asking us to help. But Blue Ventures 
is a marine conservation organization, as my colleagues reminded me. How could we conceivably offer health care? Yet what I'd seen in Madagascar stayed with me long after I returned home. These communities were so remote. Their only mode of transport was boat or ox and cart. It could take them three days to get to the nearest city. There was nobody there to provide them with health care. And yet there we already were, working with them, and they trusted us. I'd never seen such a huge unmet need for health care, and I really wanted us to respond to what we'd seen. So, we took what felt like a brave decision. After a full two years of preparation, we opened the doors to the first family planning service in the area. We had no budget. I took whatever help I could get. I was donated a box of condoms by my local family planning clinic here in Exeter. So I flew to Madagascar with a rucksack full of condoms. <laughs> Not my best decision. Um, but you'll be pleased to know that we've professionalized our approach since then. But I do shudder to think what would have happened if the customs officials at the airport had opened my bag. <laughs> I was really excited to be opening the doors to the first clinic, <laughs> but was completely unprepared for what was to happen. On that first day, 20% of all women of reproductive age came to our first clinic. I opened the doors to be greeted by the sight of a beach full of women waiting to be seen, singing, laughing, playing games with their children. Some had brought their husbands along. We had no electricity, so we worked until it was too dark to see, and yet there were still so many women waiting. So we promised them all that we would come back and make sure all of them were seen. The stories I heard from women and girls on that day will always stay with me. They gave me more insight into what life is like for Vesu communities than I'd ever anticipated. More importantly, on that day, Blue Ventures changed. We became a conservation organization that dared to think differently and were willing to respond to the needs that communities told us about. And it turns out that the most transformational of these is providing health care. Fast forward a decade, and we've expanded this service to reach all of the communities that we work with across a huge area of Madagascar. We've trained local women to provide family planning services, maternal and child health, and safe water initiatives. We've called our health program Safidi, which means freedom to choose in the local dialect because it empowers couples to make their own reproductive choices. Through health education, communities are becoming more aware of the importance of breastfeeding, of childhood vaccination, of hand washing, and so are better able to choose to be healthy. Healthcare is now as much part of what we do as fisheries management and marine conservation. And when we talk to communities, we talk about the interconnection between human and environmental health. What that means is, men may come to meetings to learn about fisheries and to discuss fisheries, yet they get to learn about family planning. <laughs> Women who may have come to discuss child health get to take part in discussions about fisheries. So what have we seen? Before Safidi was founded, less than 10% of women of reproductive age in our area we're using a modern method of contraception. Ten years on, that's gone up to two-thirds of women. And the general fertility rate, which measures the number of births per woman per year, is half of what it was before we opened that first clinic. Women are healthier. And because women are able to space their pregnancies and better able to look after their families, their children are healthier. Girls are better able to complete their education. And because of, there are fewer mouths to feed, this should mean less fishing pressure and less pressure on marine resources. Now, these are all the results we hoped we would see. 
but some of what we've seen has been completely unexpected. And this is the stuff that excites me the most. Because, because we are offering a service that communities want and value, and they see us as genuinely interested in their welfare, their trust in us is growing. And this appears to be strengthening their engagement in marine conservation. Because women are able to space their pregnancies, they're better able to work, often, often being able to gain a livelihood for the first time. Not only is this increasing household incomes, it's raising the status of women within society. And we're also seeing women taking a greater interest in the way natural resources are managed. Ten years ago, 13% of the Marine Management Committee in the village where we first started working were women. In last year's elections, that figure jumped up threefold to 38%. And just to put that in perspective, 29% of politicians in the UK Parliament are women. Thanks to Safidi, Irene has been able to delay having another child. To earn money, she grows seaweed, which she farms in the lagoon in front of her village, and she's able to sell that. Her confidence has grown. She's built a house, and she's able to pay for her son's school fees. She's become a passionate advocate of family planning in her village, speaking to women about the benefits of making their own reproductive choices, even taking them to clinic if they ask. Inspired by all that we've seen, the next stage of our journey is to see who else can benefit from what we've learned. We're spearheading a, a movement that supports adoption of this approach far beyond the reach of Blue Ventures. Health and conservation organizations are forming partnerships all over Madagascar to replicate this approach, and more and more communities are getting more and more of their needs met. And we're casting our metaphorical net even wider. We're hosting visits from coastal communities as far afield as India, Mozambique, and Mexico. And through these visits, people like Irene and Noriko are able to share their experiences, inspiring these communities to take these ideas home with them. What started in Madagascar is now attracting the interest of organizations all over the tr coastal tropics. And by the end of this year, we'll be working with partners throughout the Western Indian Ocean and in parts of Southeast Asia. And we're hoping that through these partnerships, we'll be able to reach over a million people with this way of working. But wherever we end up, Madagascar will always be Blue Ventures' spiritual home. Vezu means, among other things, to struggle with the sea. And Vezu communities continue to struggle with their ever-changing seascape. But for the first time in many years, there are fishermen in Rico's community who are seeing fish stocks recovering. For the first time, couples are able to plan their families. For the first time, women like Irene are having a say in the way their marine resources are managed. And back at Blue Ventures, we understand more clearly than ever the value of listening. And we've witnessed firsthand the magic that can be created when you have the courage to respond to what communities tell you they need. When, when we listened to communities, they really did tell us the diagnosis. And they taught us an important lesson. Integrating healthcare into conservation activities not only enables communities to lead healthier lives, it also enables them to better protect the ocean something they're doing for all of us. There are over a billion people who rely on fishing for food and for income. Many of them live in some of the most remote parts of the world, alongside the same amazing marine wildlife, facing the same challenges as the Vezu. Imagine if all of these people could be met with the same willingness to listen, the same willingness to respond to their needs. Just imagine our oceans once again teeming with some of the greatest wildlife this planet has ever seen. Imagine fishing communities being able to enjoy good health 
and an abundance of food from the sea, secure in the knowledge they will always be able to provide for their families. Imagine children from these communities never having to go hungry. Imagine these communities becoming more resilient to whatever challenges they might face and being able to live truly sustainably. Now that's the future we want to help create. Thank you very much.